2.6b, order of operations with fractions. Remember, the order can be remembered with PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, where P is parentheses, but it can also be an absolute value. E is for exponents, M slash D is for multiply and divide, which is goes from left to right, and the A and S are for add and subtract, which also goes left to right. When doing order of operations with fractions, you're probably going to need some scratch paper. Let's look at example one. Here's example one. Let's start with P for parentheses. There are parentheses, but remember, it's only for what is inside of the parentheses, which there's nothing to do, so this step is skipped. And we move on to exponents. There is an exponent, as you can see, so we will start there. And five halves squared means you square each of the numbers, giving you 25 fourths. We will place this into the problem and then carry everything else straight down. Next, we move on to multiply and divide, which goes left to right. So as you can see, we're actually going to be doing our division first. Remember with division, you turn it to multiplication and you use the reciprocal. Also remember, we're going to reduce. Three goes into nine, nine divides by three, three times, and 12 divided by three is four. Five and goes into five once, and five goes into 10 twice. This gives us three eighths, which we place back in the problem. Now, we see that we still have more multiply and divide. So we will do this step next. So we have 25 fourths times 1 30th, which we then need to reduce. Five goes into 25 five times, and five goes into 36 times. This gives us five 20 fourths, which we place back into the problem. We now have the fraction three-eighths plus five twenty-fourths. And we're on to the add and subtract step. But as you can see, our denominators do not match. Therefore, we must find a least common denominator, and we'll use mental math, where twenty-four divided by eight gives us three, so our least common denominator is twenty-four. That means we just need to change the first fraction, or three-eighths which we're going to multiply it by three. This will give us nine twenty-fourths. Let's place that back in the problem. Now that our denominators match, we can add together nine-fifths, or nine plus five is fourteen over twenty-four. Remember, when you get to the end of the problem, you must reduce. Both of these numbers are divisible by two, which gives you seven twelfths. Our final answer is seven twelfths. As you can see, there are quite a few steps, so let's look at another example. Here's example two. Once again, let's start with P for parentheses. Eight fifths is in parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside, so it doesn't count. But remember, absolute values are actually parentheses, so let's start there. We have seven thirds minus nine halves in an absolute value. We must first find our least common denominator, which is six. Then let's change each of our fractions so that their denominators match and we can subtract. The three needs to be multiplied by two and the two by a three. This will give us fourteen sixths minus twenty-seven sixths, which gives us negative thirteen sixths. Remember, this is still inside of an absolute value. But when you take the number out of an absolute value, it becomes positive, 
Remember, that is what an absolute value does. It takes whatever's inside and makes it a positive number. This means we put 13 sixths back in the problem. Also remember, whenever you take something out of a, an absolute value, you must put it back into parentheses as to not change the problem. We can now carry down everything from above. As you can see, we are done with the parentheses step as there's nothing to do inside any of the parentheses. So now let's move on to the second step of exponents. As you can see, there are exponents in this problem. So we have eight squared over five squared because remember you give the exponent to both the numerator and the denominator. This gives us 64 over 25. Let's put that back in the problem. Now our exponent step is complete and we can move on to multiply and divide. We see that this is a multiply and divide or specifically multiply. Remember, if there's no symbol between two things, it means multiplication. So we actually have negative nine-tenths times thirteen-sixths, which we can then reduce. Three goes into nine three times and three goes into six two times. Remember, the negative did not get crossed out. This gives us negative thirty-nine twentieths. Let's put this back in the problem. Now we have completed the multiply and divide step. So we can move on to add and subtract. Since our denominators do not match, we're going to need to find a least common denominator. Remember with larger numbers, we may need to find the prime factorization in order to find the least common denominator. This means that we find the prime factorization of both twenty-five and twenty. Twenty-five is five times five and twenty is five times four, which is two times two. So this gives us a five squared and two squared times five. So our least common denominator has both twos and fives, specifically two twos and two fives, remembering that we take the highest exponent from each. This means we have four times twenty-five or one hundred is our least common denominator. Now we must take our sixty-four twenty-fifths and our nine twentieths and multiply them by their missing factors. The twenty-five is missing a four and the twenty is missing a five. Sixty-four times four gives us two hundred and fifty-six over one hundred and nine times five gives us forty-five over one hundred. Two hundred and fifty-six minus ninety-five gives us two hundred and eleven over one hundred. Actually, common mistake that happens quite often is that you forget to carry the exact number over. So let's change that to a thirty-nine, which means that we actually have one hundred ninety-five here and two fifty-six minus one hundred ninety-five is sixty-one. Sixty-one one-hundredths is our answer. Remember when doing Order of operations with fractions, there's going to be lots of steps and as you can tell from example two, you can make mistakes very easily. So make sure to take your time and to do all of your scratch work to make sure that you don't miss numbers or parts of the problem.